I, many of you are interested in how I go about using um, Trevor Gore's method for um, determining the thickness of a, of a top or a back or you know any sort of plate um, used in guitar um, following um, the methods in the Gore Galette books. Um, the first operation really is, is you need to, to have the, a rectangular piece of the wood um, even thickness, it's best if it's plain to thickness, um, but I don't do that. I, I use a, um, a belt sander to take it to thickness, uh, but I always do that and a lot of the, the issue is getting consistency, so I do everything in a consistent manner as opposed to absolute numbers, but um, getting the plate square, I'll generally um, use a radio arm saw to cut the, the end square and then I make sure that it's the, you know, it's not a trapezoid, it's a rectangle. Other than that, it's like I um, measure the length, measure the width, record it, um, measure the thickness. And I generally use, you know, a couple tools, the calibers and um, this thickness gauge and I play around to um, everything sort of seems to be in agreement so I'm not getting a, you know, a measuring error. And then, um, you know, get, get the weight of the plate. Um, I record all of that information on the wood. Oftentimes as I'm going through tops, I will do several for one guitar and so that I, I'll, you know, that sort of keep track of what's up so I don't have to do it again. I'll actually record um, the information on the plate so I could save it. So once this is all recorded, um, I come over here and I use this tool, Visual Analyzer. It's a free tool um, that you could get it set up um, according to the information that Trevor Gore has on his site. Um, for, for measuring the properties of wood, it, and it's for a PC. There are other tools that people use on a Mac, but I use, use this on a PC. Um, so the, what you have to do is you want to get um, basically the stiffness of the wood is relates to the frequency that a rectangular plate will ring at. Um, so there are places on the wood where one um, mode of the vibration will ring where the other is suppressed. Um, you find those locations and, and then do, do recordings. Um, there are really two different methods. This is Visual Analyzer, which I could do a, uh, a spectrum graph, which gives me um, it's a, a graph in the frequency domain. Um, but generally, for the long grain um, stiffness, because that's the most important, I'll at least try to use um, the Strobosoft tuner set into tap mode. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate both. I'll, I'll play around and find a location where I hear the vibration sort of sound the best. Um, and, and and use that. So in this case, I'm getting 65 um, hertz, and also I'm seeing like 129 or 130 hertz. So my guess is that's the long and the cross grain, but um, the the 65 hertz that you know that I, that I'm getting is um, probably. What I what I'll go with. So now when I, I go to the um, spectrum, here your the the tool set up to take ten samples. It's about every second or so if you set it up the way that Trevor suggests, and um, and you want to be careful that you don't hit it too often, or you just get weird results. But anyway, there's a capture spectrum button on the tool.
So um, after around 10 samples, it, it pops up with the frequency spectrum. I get rid of the phase because I don't need it. And then I look at the, um, and, and this one has a really pretty strong response there at the, um, You know, right at 65, right at 65 hertz, which matched what we saw in the, um, in, on, on the tuner um, software. So, um, there were the SpectroSoft software. So, I would write that number down. And now to find the cross grain, it's a slightly different location. And... Trevor has a recording, um, I mean, a diagram of where these would be. I, I tend to move around so I could hear it, you know, starting in the correct location. Um, and I could use the strobe soft here, but then you really have to set a window that you want to look in, because otherwise you'll pick up some of the, other, you know, the earlier peaks. Um, like I say, it was going back and forth, so I suspect this one will be around... 129. Oops, I didn't actually hit the spectrum sample. Sorry about that. Here we go. Now in this case, there's two peaks. You still see that um, you know, that 65 peak here, which was the long grain. So I'll ignore that. And in this case, I had suppressed it somewhat, so I see the cross grain a little bit better. I have a really clear peak here, uh, right at 129. So that's sort of what we saw popping back and forth using the Strobosoft software. Um, that so that measures the you know allow us to get the cross grain stiffness. Um, and then the last measurement is sort of like how the, how it vibrates some um, diagonally, I guess. Um, and this is usually the, a lower um, value, um, and sometimes it's lower than what you're going to pick up on your microphone, or there's other noise like 60 hertz or something, 50 hertz, that'll get in the way. Um, and and. Trevor has suggested just putting a, non, a nominal value in, um, you know, when, when doing the thickness calculations, but it's, it's measurable, and here's, um, so I'll, I'll do this last test. So that we use for this test, I look for the very first peak, and, and amazingly enough, we have a relatively clear one. If it's on 66, I I would ignore it because it's um, that would that would end up being the long grain that I'm seeing. But in this case, it's um, 51 and a half or so. So that's a, a you know a pretty probably a pretty decent value and I had a nice clean um, sample on there so I so I was happy. So now with that information and the information from the wood itself um, I, I would enter that all into an Excel sp spreadsheet. Here are the, here's the length of the me plate that I measured. Here's the width of the plate that I measured and it's in meters. You know the units are very important. The weight in kilograms the thickness in meters, um, and that gives a density of um, 4.64, which um, if we uh, look over here, this is from the wood database, the, the, um, the density, the average dry density for Port Orford Cedar is 465, so we're right in there. And so here I, I ended up putting in the values for the 
for the um, long grain frequency and the cross grain frequency and the, um, you know, that diagonal sort of long end cross that I've done. And um, through the equations that you could get in the, in, in the design book, I, I calculate the um, stiffness, um, the Young's modulus. And um, so you could see the long grain was 14, which is, which is pretty dang good. And, and in this case, um, the thickness for a classical top would be about two. I'd probably go just like 2.1 or something like that. Um, but um, you could see that, that the Portarford Cedar, you know, the average Young's modulus um, is 11.35. So this is a pretty exceptionally stiff piece of it. And I could hear it in the tap tone as it, it rings really nicely. Um, so now I have a, a target. I mean, my spreadsheet, I have the target thickness for the classical and the steel string. Um, but, you know, as you go from one guitar to the next, you have to enter in the correct length and width of the guitar that you're going to use the width of the lower bout and the length of the guitar. So that's pretty, that's pretty much it in terms of, um, you know, now I, I know, you know, what the target thickness of this is and, um, using the density and I could use a, um, average, um, area for the different guitars, I could sort of actually calculate the, the heaviness of the top plate, you know, without the, without the braces. So, um, that's it. That's how you do it. Thank you.